Hello everyone, Seymour Better here of FreePrescriptionLenses.com and today I get the pleasure of cutting my own lenses. I'm normally cutting lenses for everyone else and too busy to do my own. Today let's do that. I'm going to cut drill mount lenses for my Silhouette Series 7581. I'm going to be cutting shape 5397 but the color I'm choosing for the chassis, the three pieces I call the chassis, is 6076 which is a blue color. Of course, my silhouette cleaning cloth and my frame. So, comes with the, inside the case comes with what they call the hard sleeves, which I don't use. I prefer the soft sleeves. But this is my frame. It comes with a little plastic sleeve on the temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping. It does not come with any lenses in it because I've yet determined, well, I can cut any shape to go in these, but I'm going to show you in just a moment which shape I have pulled up. But this is the dark blue. I wear a lot of blue. I know everyone's saying another pair of blue glasses. That's what my wife is saying. But I tell her, how many pair of black shoes do you have? So that's why I need more than one pair of blue glasses. So let's see here. First thing I'm going to do, turn on the computer. Wake up, computer, wake up. I am going to pull up the job. This is a new job. You don't get to usually see this. We're going to do job 9777. How about that? Let me double check that. Yep, 9778. Okay, let's pull up the shape of the computer of the lens that we will be doing. And I am cutting shape 5397, 5397 from the Silhouette Library. That is the shape. Click on that. Send this job over to what is called SE Box, the computer. I get to scan this and the shape of my lens comes up. In just a moment it will. Of course here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic silhouette frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription or non-prescription fashion lenses for any silhouette frame. And of course, I'm beyond single vision lenses. I'm wearing a progressive, which is the no-line bifocal. I'm using the Essilor Ideal Advanced with Transitions Gray and Crizal Provencia with that purplish hue on there. So I'm gonna, I've already got the lenses dotted up. This is my optical center height. I'm gonna lay that out. In fact, I need to type in a little bit of coordinates here. My pupillary distance, which is 31. The computer starts at 32.5. And that is the pupillary distance for my right eye. So I'm gonna hit the minus button till I get to 31. I'm going to do an optical center height of 20. It's starting there. So I'm gonna tap that button until we get up to 20. I'm gonna change the layout from single vision to progressive. I could do line style bifocal. That's the layout chart for that. I could do an executive lens where the lens, the bifocal segment goes all the way across the lens, but I'm not doing that. We're going to stick with, oops, sorry, we're going to stick with the progressive. So I need a block, or as I like to call them, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to my lens while it is cutting. This is what's going to hold it in place in the lathe. So I need to put two double sided adhesive stickers on there. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick that onto the first block. Do the same thing now for the second block. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. On the back is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice today. The first time is right now. It's going to attach itself to something magnetical there in the arm. And where's my stylus? Here it is. So 31 pupillary distance, 20 OC height. I'm going to place that dot right there. Move some things here around. I want to be able to see the edges of the lenses as it is laying out. So, get everything lined up there. And, make sure everything is lined up on center. And hit that button, the arm comes down and places the block onto the right lens. Let's do the same thing now for the left lens. My pupillary distance for my left eye is 30. Same optical center height. So it starts at 31. I'm going to tap the minus button twice until 30 pops up. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line up that magnet there in the arm. And make sure the lens is large enough to fit. Yes, it is. Just in time. The coordinates I gave to the lab are perfect. And that's on there. That's looking good. Same optical center height. And I'm going to hit that button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the left lens. 
Now this is the edger. This is what's going to do all the work today while I run my mouth. This costs $40,000. I recommend everyone go out and buy one. Put it on your kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own lenses at home. You won't need this guy anymore to do it for you. So the actual cutting wheel is over here on the far right. It's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away the lens material until it's the final size. There's a wheel in the center of the channel, a little that cuts the v-shaped bevel i will not use that i'll be using this side of the bevel wheel because i'm going to have a flat edge i will not have a bevel now i'll have a safety bevel on my lenses in just a moment now this is a polishing wheel some people with the drill mount lenses like i'm cutting prefer a polish i will not be polishing mine because i personally just don't prefer it email me if you want to really know reasons why underneath here is the drill bit that will let me pull that out and show you what that looks like Close the door. That is the drill bit that will drill the holes into the lens. And this is the wheel that will apply the safety bevel to the rear and front surfaces of the lens. So let me pull all this back. Let me go ahead and pull up the shape of the lens I'll be cutting today. My lens. That is the shape. You can see the two drill holes on either side. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high-index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that, but these are polycarbonate. Again, this is the polish button. I do not want to put a polish on the lens. I am going to put a light safety bevel on the front concave surface of the lens. Convex, excuse me. And I'm going to put a heavier bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. So let's go ahead and press that on there tight. Now the magnet is going to do its job a second time today. It's going to hold it in place into the chuck or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. Hey, again, if you know a better joke, write it down on a $100 bill and mail it to me, and I'll read it on the air, if you think you're funnier than me. So, I'm going to hit the green arrow, which is start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts, and then two white styluses are going to trace the lens to make sure that it's large enough, not this time to fit into the chassis, but the, the lens is large enough for the size that I have programmed. And you can see the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once, measuring the thickness. And actually this time it's going to measure the thickness of where the two drill holes are doing. That's something you normally don't see in the video. Measuring the thickness to make sure it is, has enough thickness for the grommets to hold into the chassis into the lens. So the lens is dropping down onto the cutting wheel. The, you see light flickering in the background. That is water there to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off of the lens. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic, high index plastic, and Trivex cut wet. Now water will spray onto the lens for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away any optical debris that you see beginning to form on the edges of the lenses now. Now my lenses, as I mentioned, are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. They are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. And like the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every few hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun, this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. Now I do have the transitions feature in the lens, which I will show you later. I also have the Crizol Provencia because it blocks the harmful ultraviolet blue light that comes from today's electronic devices such as cell phones, tablets, cell phones, computer screens that I stand in front of all day. And it is currently the only anti-glare market, only anti-glare on the market that does that. It is Crizol's premier, premier top of the line anti-glare coating. So water is spraying onto the lens, which tells me it's almost done in the cutting cycle. And now that lever is coming out. It's going to apply the safety bevel, taking away any sharp edges from the front of the lens, and then do the same thing on the back. Now anti-glare is three features in one. It eliminates glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain, but from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead lights. It's also a reflection-free lens, so when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in their glasses. They see just that makes for much better eye contact. Plus, if someone takes a picture with a flash, you don't see the flash lit up in the lens. You see just 
your eyes no more flashing and it also comes the machine that applies the anti-glare coating costs well over a million dollars it takes over 24 hours to vaporize seven different coatings onto the lens and so because of the time and the investment they put the hardest scratch coating possible on the lens so the drill bit is now beginning to drill through the lens this is much easier than going to the dentist much less painful and now it's reaming it a little bit it is a one millimeter drill bit the hole that I've programmed it to drill is 1.4 millimeters so once it has gone all the way through the lens you will see it jiggle around a little bit as it reams out the hole another 0.4 of a millimeter 0.04 actually no 0.4 that's right that's right sorry I didn't know there was gonna be so much math involved so now the temporal hole is being drilled the nasal holes have been done Now the fourth one, the outermost hole. So the lens is done. In just a moment, I will open this door with my mind. I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. It just takes me a couple hours, but I can do it. Hit the button to open up the chuck. Out comes the lens. I'm going to dry everything off. And that is one complete lens. So let's go ahead and start working on the left lens. I'm going to flip that over to L. Press that down tightly. Put that in. Hit start. Just like before the door closes the clamp shuts and then the lens is going to be traced by the two white styluses you can see as it's tracing the shape of the lens that it's cutting that is the right and that is going to be the left just like before it's going to make sure to touch and tap to make sure there's enough thickness at each point where it has been programmed to drill these holes so let's go ahead and work on the right lens while the left is cutting I'm going to take this block off it is no longer needed I'm going to use my thumbnail to remove any of the last optical debris sorry make sure this is in focus here use my thumbnail to clean off any portion of lens residue that is still on there so this is the frame let me go ahead and take this apart out of how it is sent to me so I need to put this has two posts on each side I need to mount that in there so I have some little soft bushings that I get let's go ahead and get two for now so I don't spill any. you can see I'm running really really low I'm actually the number one silhouette dealer in North Carolina nobody sells more than me and so I'm going to slide Again, it's just a little rubber bushing with a backing on it that keeps the two together. I'm going to slide that into the first hole. Let's do the same thing now for the outside of the lens. So I need to trim these off flush. Silhouette has provided me with a tool, almost like a cigar cutter. Slide those in there. And that trims down flush with the lens. Tap that on the counter to make noise and have it fall out the back do the same thing now again tap that now one thing I like to do is go ahead and make sure they have been removed my favorite optical tool I bet you have one of these at home I'm gonna clean that out and I never stop using this because now because when I crimp down on those edges I want to open them back up for the shaft to be inserted so I ream that around a little bit do the same thing for all four holes and then return that back to the spot and how often do I use this look at all those holes I've put in there pretty soon I'm gonna have to start moving it down here 
So, the last tool that I need from Silhouette, it is a pair of pliers that I'm gonna press the bridge and temple onto the frame. It has a little pivoting joint in it that you will see now as it moves as I mount the lens. So again, these little prongs go right into the bridge or right, right into the holes. I press down a little bit to get it started so it holds. And then one side of the bridge does the bushing, the other side of the pliers goes and it will squeeze down. And if it were to move due to the shape of the lens, that can move with it. Nice pair of pliers to have, it really does the job well. That's in there good. Let me give it one more crimp, just to be sure. That is good. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply the right temple. Make sure that is the right one. It is embarrassing to do the left one where it's sticking upside down. So, pay attention. On goes the right one. You can barely see it. You can tell this is my new prescription. I can't wait to get it. I need that extra magnification. We all call it extra plus. That's why I have these big strong lenses here. If I have to tighten a black screw in a black frame, this is actually my Ray-Ban 811 blue rubber. I wore this thing into the ground, so I got some, I was thought I was ordering white replacement temples from Italy, but they sent me gray, so I put that on there. So I've got my blue gray one of a kind custom pair that I keep here in the lab when I really have to examine something up close. Super strong magnification. I can't even see that screen with those on but I can see my fingerprint. It's nice to have a pair like that. So that is crimped on there tight now. These hold very well. There's no screws to ever come loose in this frame. Those compression fittings, in fact, this is the only pair of glasses allowed into space through NASA for two simple reasons. There are no screws to come loose. And this is the memory metal titanium that you can be very rough with because there are no opticians in space to be able to adjust glasses if you bump your head floating around in zero gravity. But also, one nice thing about these, 1.5 grams. There is nothing lighter than a silhouette frame. And of course, you're gonna get the thinner, lighter weight lenses that go in there. These come in many, many colors, many styles. I can do any, custom, any shape that you want in here. Custom, I can customize it this way. I can make it wider. Silhouette is still the only company that gives you a choice of bridge widths and temple length. So these are fit like custom gloves. The left lens is done. Let's go ahead and take that out. Dry everything off. Go ahead and take this block off. It is no longer needed. Again, run my thumbnail around. To get any of the optical sawdust off. Ooh, I love it when it comes off in one big long piece like that. Drop it off the, onto the counter. And once I'm satisfied that my thumbnail has gotten that all off of the lens, and on the counter I collect it. Oop, there's that big long piece. I collect it neatly into one pile on the counter, and then I wipe it on the floor. Because <laughs> that never gets old either. Where's my, uh, hang on, hang on, what am I looking for? What am I looking for? Where's that little round thing with the, have I lost it already? I only had a few left. There it is. There it is. Let me get two more sleeves out. Oop, dropped one on the floor. I'll be fishing for that one later. I get a hundred of these a month from Silhouette. That's not nearly enough. I buy another, another 200. They come in packets of 100. And I go through about 300 of these a month. Being very careful not to drop them on the floor like I just did. But it does happen. So... Go ahead and slide that into the first one. Boy, do I need that extra magnification. Can't wait to put these on. I cannot wait. Come on, get in there, get in there. There we go. Let's do the other one. So again, the bushings have gone all the way through. I'm going ahead and use this tool to trim that off. Congratulations, it's a boy. <laughs> Use that to make sure that all the bushings have been removed. Go ahead and ream open the hole. Stick the thumbtack back in there. You like the shelf that I built? Has my seg aligner, has my tool for when I do the semi rimless frames. Keep it all there. So let's go ahead and mount this one onto it. Get to the see stuff you normally don't see in all the videos. I don't do too many drill mount frames. 
Get that pressed in there. Grab the pliers, make sure that the swiveling pivot goes onto the front, that base goes onto the back. And then hopefully you can get this in, crimp that down to where it's nice and tight. And it is. Let's do the same thing now for the temple. And go ahead and crimp that down. We are good. How about that? So it is put together. I still need to inspect it. So let me put away some of my tools. Let me clean up. Let me clean up. So we'll come back to here later. So let's go ahead and inspect this into my lensometer, make sure everything is cut correctly. My optical centers have been removed, so that's what this is for. I'm going to put some dots onto the lens. Hopefully, you don't get too many weird psychedelic effects looking in here. So every invisible bifocal has little laser marks engraved into the lens that tells me the brand of the nasal area as well as the strength of the bifocal in the corners. So when I put the two dots there, this chart that you see laying in all the videos you've never seen me use, I'm going to put those two dots into the circles that are there. And then in the center of that cross, that is now my pupillary distance and optical center. Optical center being the height of where the progressive starts. It's called a progressive lens because as you look downward, it progressively gets stronger and stronger. There's an intermediate zone in here. Everything above these dots is the distance portion of the lens. And so about here is the intermediate for anything at arm's reach, the computer screen. And then beyond that, the very bottom of the lens is the strongest portion of the lens. It's just like when you're in a pool and you walk down the as you go down the hill towards a deeper area, this as you get deeper and deeper, this gets stronger and stronger, hence the term progressive. It progressively gets stronger and stronger. So I'm going to put it in just above that black dot. The axis of my right eye is 136. I'm going to spin that wheel to 136. Turn the, oof, gracious. Make sure this is on and it's not. And read the power and I'm getting plus one, that is perfect, plus one is my prescription. I have one quarter amount of astigmatism correction. There is a stigma over the words astigmatism, it just means shape. I have two curves on my eye. I have a far-sighted curve with one complete diopter of, of correction and then I have a quarter diopter of astigmatism correction and I, that's how you line those two curves up. And this is lined up at the 136 meridian. A straight line is zero to 90 in the center to 180 over here. So we're going to turn that fine tune knob past the 90 meridian to about 136. My left eye, again, plus one diopter of, of far-sighted correction. I'm sorry, near-sighted. I'm actually far-sighted. There's a plus sign because my lens is magnified. When I look at something without my glasses on, it is much too small. So that's why my lenses will magnify everything to the correct size. Once it's the correct size, the astigmatism correction makes everything nice and crisp. Astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F. And the, the, the fine-tuned curvature for my left eye is 17. So starting at zero, I only have to turn it to about 17. I do need another. This is referred to as the add. The bifocal strength is the add because it means in addition to what's up here. So even though I have plus one in the top, I need another plus 175 at the bottom. Excuse me, giving me a total of 275 reading power. So, let's go ahead and check the left lens. Turn that to 17. Put that in, read the power, and again, I am at plus one, so that is cut perfectly. I have minus a quarter of astigmatism, and we end up at plus 75. So, that is made perfectly. I couldn't have done any better if I had done it myself. So, Let's see, my pupillary distance for the right eye is 31, 30 for the left for a combined value of 60. I will turn the card around so you can see. I'm going to take the PD stick out of my pocket, place the dot on my right lens, and when we hold it up to the left, we're getting 61 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. The optical center height is 20. Measuring that dot to the bottom of the lens, we're getting 20 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. Same thing now for the left lens, 20 millimeters, that is cut perfectly. 
Now this is the portion in every video that I mentioned that when you get these in the mail, of course I'm keeping these, I'm wearing them in the lab, you will see me wearing these. I will have to slowly replace the Versace's you have seen me wear for the last couple years, even though I'm never going to replace these. I just need a little bit stronger lens at the bottom. But I, but as I clean these, I mention to everyone that when you do get a pair of glasses from me in the mail, there's a small chance that the, that the frame could be a little loose or a little tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And that's why 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. So, I am no exception. I'm part of that 80%. But if you, it only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to adjust a pair of glasses perfectly. So if you get a pair from me and they don't fit perfectly, just stop by your local shop and they'll adjust it for you. Now, let me put mine back on so I'll make sure that they're clean so I can see what I'm doing. So that's about it. So, of course, I get one of my own premium microfiber cleaning cloths. And when you buy a frame from me, not only do you get one, the Crizal Provencia comes with a Crizal cloth and of course Silhouette, the frame company, has given me a lens cleaning cloth. For everyone else, I include instructions on how to care for your frame and lenses so they will last you for years, but as well as your cleaning cloths and the case. So those two will last you for years. So this is what my lenses look like while they have while they are still clear, I will go ahead and you can see how my lenses magnify as I move them across the script. Hopefully that'll work. I'm not sure what visual effect you see when I do that. But let's see here. Let's go ahead and move this. Bring the transitions unit out. This just has a UV light on the inside. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in here and expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light. Now, as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to turn dark. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 to return back to virtually clear. Now, this is important. Everyone pay attention. All transition lenses will get dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first two weeks that they're exposed to the sun. At the end of two weeks, they'll be at their final hue and work for years with maximum performance. The only time they won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause them to turn dark or cause your dashboard to crack, and that's why they don't turn dark in a car. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they will darken. Now, as soon as you step out of the car, they'll get dark too. They're also temperature sensitive, meaning they will get darker when it's 85 degrees and below than they will when it's 95 and above. But when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable. Nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. So that is the first time they have been activated. You can see the purple hue from the Crizal Provencia. I have cr the traditional Crizal anti-glare coating on these lenses, so you see a greenish hue on there. And there's a purplish one on these lenses. P for purple for Provencia. Because it's in the ultraviolet spectrum, that's where you find the harmful blue light. Now, one other thing that I have got, and that's the nice thing about silhouettes, is because the transition lenses do not turn dark in a car, Silhouette makes a custom clip that fits onto the front of the lens. Comes with a little nice sleeve, curved sleeve to fit in your back pocket right next to my flask. No, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. I don't have that in my pocket while I'm driving. So, and this snaps onto the bridge. I'm going to go ahead and, well, I guess I can leave the sticker on to demonstrate. So these clips, which again, following the lightweight themes, extremely lightweight. These are polarized, comes in two colors, gray and brown. I have chosen the gray. It literally just snaps right on top. You pinch down and it snaps on and it's now the shape of my lens. Some people like to go a little bit larger and I don't blame them. You can actually get a larger clip because it just blocks that much more sun while you're wearing them. And some people like to use their thumbnail to remove the thing I always just simply rotate it until it pops off. So that is that. Here's my first time putting them on. Where'd the mirror go? Here it is. So I will now take off my Versace's that you have seen me wear for many, many years and put on the silhouettes if I can. It does require two hands to put on. So that is that, of course. That is with them darkening. Over the next minute, you will see them return back to clear, just like my old pair. 
So that is it. If anyone has any questions, you can email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or simply click the contact me button on this website. But I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut my invisible bifocals with transition grays and Crizal Provencia and my Silhouette 7581 chassis in the color. What color did I get? It is 6076, which is the dark blue. And hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.